Greetings, welcome to today's session. In this session, we'll be looking at question three, which is on parametric equations. So we're given x of t to be that expression and we're also given y of t to be the other expression. The question reads, find the area between the curve and the x-axis between the points one and zero, e and two, shaded in the diagram. So if you look at the area they are interested in, which they are saying is shaded in the diagram, it is that area. That is what we are interested in. Then they say, furthermore, as a hint, use integration by parts on one line. So that is what we are supposed to do. So let's quickly write down our x of t and our y of t. Now that we have our x of t and y of t, we need to look at the area. If you look at our equation, they are saying that we need to find the area between the curve and the x-axis. So for us to be able to find that, we need to understand something which is simple so that we can formulate our equation. So because we're looking for the area between the curve and the x-axis, it means we are going to make vertical slices like that so that we formulate some triangles with a certain width so that we can find the area. So if you think of what is going on here, what this means is since we are on the x-axis and we are on the y-axis, it means the width of our rectangle there will simply have a length or a size of dx. And if you think of what dx means, it is just the derivative of the parametric equation that describes the x-coordinate. But if you think of what the length is at any point, or the height of our rectangle at any point, it will always be given by y of t. So if we formulate the area expression, it will be, so the area will be a, is equal to the integral from alpha to beta y of t multiplied by x dot dt. This is the expression which we are going to use to be able to find our area, essentially between the curve and the x axis. So now what we need to ask ourselves is, what is this alpha, the lower limit of integration, and what is beta? the upper limit of integration. So there's two ways you can go about finding them. I'm just going to take the first way. So let's look at the two points. So the point I'm going to focus on is the one of one and zero. So I'm going to copy my X and Y here so that we are going to use them to be able to find exactly what is the X or what is the T value that gives us this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equate the x's together and I'm going to equate the y's together so that I solve the easiest one. So essentially the question is, which I'm trying to answer is, what t value did I put for me to move from e to the t to 1? And what t value did I put on y of t for me to move from t squared plus t to getting zero. So if you look carefully, you can just choose to equate the x's. So let's choose to solve for t using the x component. So if you look carefully, we'll have e to the t, that is the x component equals one. But we all know that one is e to the zero. And once the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal. So you can see that what we did was we just set t to be 0. And this now becomes our lower integration limit. So that becomes our lower integration limit. So I'll just use lower integration limit. 
done with that now let's look at the other one where we need to deal with the upper integration limit so i'm going to copy my x of t and my y of t paste them down here and then let's quickly see what we have so if you look at the point the other one it is e and then it is two so i need to ask myself what did I do to my x for me to eventually get to e? And I need to ask myself, what did I do to my y, specifically t, for me to move from t squared plus 1 to getting 2? Then the same question applies on the other one. So just like the previous one, I'm just going to choose the x component. So if I choose the x component, you'll see that I have e to the t equals e, which is just the same as e to the 1. So we can clearly see that when the bases are the same, the exponents should equate. So what we see here is that we are getting an answer of t is 1. Then this is our upper integration limit. Now we sorted with the limits, we can now go ahead and find x dot. Then after finding x dot, we multiply it with our y dot and then start doing our integration. So let's find our derivative of x there. If you look carefully, our x is e to the t. So when you derive e to the t, you still get e to the t. So let's create some space and see what we obtain so let me push this to the previous page and push the other stuff up okay so now that i have my x dot here i can now go ahead and do my integration so if you think carefully my area will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of our y of t which is t squared plus t multiplied by e to the t because of that formula, of this formula which we have here, and then dt. So when we look carefully here, we have a function that depends on t and a function that depends on t. That is why we need integration by parts. But as part of the hint, they told us that we need to use integration by parts on one line that's what they told us so they told us that we should use integration by parts on one line So let's go to the next page and explore exactly how do we do that. So I'll copy my integral and we move with it. Paste it just there and erase all of this. So let me just quickly help you to revise integration by parts on one line. So what happens is we have the integral of u dv and this will be equal to u times v minus u integral of v like that. So we derive that u and then minus, sorry, now it will be plus second derivative multiplied by the second integral of v minus third derivative of u multiplied by the third integral of v and this will happen until we get u to be zero so remember that until we get the nth derivative of u to be equal to zero so we'll carry on until this is true carry on until this is true 
So this means when we are looking at our integration by parts, we'll choose u to be the polynomial part, which is t squared plus t. And then the other part, it becomes dv, which it is e to the t. So if you look carefully, when we derive our du, I'll just use u dot for the derivative. It will become 2t plus 1. Then I need to integrate and get the v. If you look carefully, it becomes e to the t. Then I need to derive again. I'll derive until I get a 0. It becomes a 2. Then I need to integrate our v, which becomes e to the t. Then I derive. That becomes the third time I get a 0. Then I integrate our v for the second time becomes e to the t and if you think carefully i need to integrate for the third time so i need to integrate v for the third time and that still becomes e to the t so if you think carefully of my integral from 0 to 1 of t squared plus t e to the t dt it will be equal to, if you look at u times v, just put them in like this. So if you look at the u times v, it is t squared plus t multiplied by our v, which is e to the t. Then minus the first derivative of u, which is 2t plus 1, multiplied by the integral of v which is e to the t. Then we should alternate the signs if you look carefully. So I should have a plus. The second derivative of u, which gave us a 2. And the second integral of v, that is still e. And then we go to the third one. We change the sign. The third derivative of u becomes 0. The third integral of v becomes e. So once we get the 0, we stop. So the limits are 1, 0. Okay. So if you look carefully, I can just pull out an e to the t. Then if you look at what is going to happen inside, is I'm going to have t squared. Just going to collect like terms. This will be minus 2t. So that will end up in t squared minus t. Then I'll have a minus 1 plus 2. That will just be a plus 1, like that. And if you look, we are evaluating this between 1 and 0. If we do the substitution here, you will see that what we will have will be e to the 1, open bracket, 1 squared, minus 1 plus 1. Then minus e to the 0, when we substitute the lower limit, that will be 0 squared, minus 0 plus 1. So if you look at our final answer, we're going to have e into, if you look carefully, it will be just 1 minus 1, which will be leaving us with the 1. Then minus e to the 0, we all know it is 1. Then open bracket inside, if you look carefully, you're only left with 1. So if we now finalize our answer, you will see that our area will simply be given by our e minus 1. And this will be units squared because we are looking at the area. So I hope this does make sense. Make sure that you do understand integration by parts on one line. What is most important is that we alternate the signs there. So make sure you do not forget that you should alternate the signs. Another important part just to close off this video is the one of finding the limits. Make sure that you do understand how we found these limits here. The lower integration limit and also the higher integration limit. And this equation here applies when you are looking for the area between the curve and the x-axis when you have parametric equations. 
I hope this helps. Thank you.